Am I the only one that's finding themselves not as excited as they expected to be or maybe feel that they should be heading into the Royal Rumble this Sunday? Because I'm having a hard time really trying to drum up excitement for myself to get myself ready to go and really interested in this show. I mean, I even walk back and watch some of my old Royal Rumble reviews from my Royal Rumble review series, and that didn't get the job done. I just am not that excited about the 2015 Royal Rumble. And, and the thing is, is that for the WWE, I give them a tremendous amount of credit in the sense that when it came to the WWE World Heavyweight Championship match between Brock Lesnar and John Cena, they called an audible. They put Seth Rollins in, and over the past couple of weeks, they have done a tremendous job of building up that match. They've done a tremendous job of, in particular, building up Brock Lesnar, minus the babyface turn maybe, and building up Seth Rollins especially to the point where we're not sure who's going to win on Sunday. We don't know what's going to happen on Sunday. But I know that I actually want to tune in to see what is going to happen, fully expecting that that match is going to main event the show, is going to close out the night. So it's so often the case where we kind of get those pedestrian buildups to title matches. Here is a triple threat match for the main belt, Usually don't like triple threat matches, but this one here I'm incredibly intrigued by, and I am eagerly anticipating, and I look at John Cena versus Seth Rollins versus Brock Lesnar for the WWE World Heavyweight Championship as not only a Royal Rumble-worthy uh, main event and title match, to me it almost looks like it should be the WrestleMania main event at this point in time. It just came a couple of months too early. And I'm serious. I mean, that's how big this match feels. That's how intriguing this match feels. So I would expect that with being so in excited about that match that I would be ramped up, fired up, ready to go for the Rumble. Especially because this is the Royal Rumble. I mean, to me, this is my favorite pay-per-view of the year. Even more so than a WrestleMania. This is my favorite gimmick pay-per-view. This is the one that I always look forward to seeing because it has that unique match, the Royal Rumble match, and there is nothing like it. It has its entirely different feel. And not only that, it is the show where you officially kick off the road to WrestleMania. So I always look forward to the Royal Rumble, even if I'm not that excited about the product. I'm always excited about the Royal Rumble to a certain degree, even if, again, I'm not that excited about the product. But this year, man, it's a lot different. I've got a great triple threat WWE World Heavyweight Championship match that almost feels like it should be main eventing WrestleMania. At the Royal Rumble, mind you, is where it's at. And yet, I'm not excited about the show. And I really can't get into the show. I think part of the thing is, to me, that the WWE devoted so much energy and so many resources into building up that match into a monster that they forgot the rest of the show. Like, I was going to come on here and do a 2015 Royal Rumble preview show, and I looked at the card. There really wasn't a card. And I sit there and say, why the hell would I bother so I could talk about a freaking Divas tag match and the Ascension versus the New Age Outlaws? No, I don't think so. It doesn't justify, doesn't merit, doesn't deserve a preview show. So, therefore, I'm not doing a preview show. This is the closest damn thing you're going to get to it. But I look at it, and I'm like, they put everything into this, and it seemed like threw everything else under the bus like it didn't really matter. They didn't bother to piece together a complete and total show. They didn't bother to give us a really quality lineup for a Big Four pay-per-view. And what most especially of all concerns me is the fact that the Royal Rumble match itself has really truly played second fiddle to the title match. And to me that seems wrong, and that seems off, and is very ass-backwards. To me, the pay-per-view is called the Royal Rumble for a reason. The reason it is called the Royal Rumble is because the event is built around the 30-man over-the-top rope battle royal Royal Rumble match. Yet if you were watching Raw the past few weeks, it would be hard to know that the most important match on that show, the match that that show is usually built around, is the Royal Rumble match. 
It seems like the WWE floated the idea out there of going to a 40-man rumble again and then went back to a 30-man rumble and then decided they weren't really going to care that much about the Royal Rumble this year. It ties into what I talked about before about the fact that I don't think the WWE cares who wins the 2015 Royal Rumble. And based off of the way they built up that Rumble match and built towards that Rumble match over the past few weeks, I'm dead seriously convinced that that's exactly the way the company feels. To me, if anything else, if I hated everything else about the product, the one thing that should have me excited, the one match I should be looking forward to because of the different things that can happen, the unpredictability and this and that, and the uniqueness of the match, it's that Royal Rumble match that in gets me invested. It's that Royal Rumble match itself that sucks me in. It's that Royal Rumble match that gets me excited for the God-blessed Royal Rumble. And yet this year we come to a point in time where I can't remember where I've been less excited about a Rumble pay-per-view, and in particular, a Rumble match. I can't think of it. I mean, when I look at the options of who could potentially win, I don't know if there is a good option at this point. I've brought up different guys and why it would be good or bad for them to win, but I mean, if we're being really honest here, you know, even I floated out Randy Orton, is that a great idea? You know, Dean Ambrose, is he ready for that spot? Bray Wyatt, you probably got Taker plans for him, and even if that wasn't the case, is he really a good option here? Especially if you're going to send him up Lesnar or freaking Rollins? I don't think so. I mean, Roman Reigns? Child, please. You know, Dolph Ziggler, child, please. Ryback, shamefully, child, please. There's not one guy that I really look, like, he look at heading into this Rumble, especially including Daniel Bryan, where I sit there and get excited about the possibility of them winning. There's not a single guy that I really feel like I can get behind and say, you know, that's my guy, that's the one that I choose, and that's the one that I want to win because I feel it's the right thing to do for this, that, and the third. I don't feel that way about any of these guys. And I really don't feel any type of way about this match at all. And that's a damn shame. This is the beginning of the road to WrestleMania. To me, this is my favorite pay-per-view of the event of the year nowadays. And I have such little interest in it. And that's a shame because I have a triple threat main event match for the title that I'm going to be incredibly excited about and eagerly anticipating, yet it's not carrying over to the rest of the show. And it almost feels like the emphasis and focus being on that has taken away from where the emphasis and focus really should have been. And furthermore, I'm sitting there looking at a WrestleMania quality main event here at the Royal Rumble, and it just seems like it's off. That title match should be secondary at the Royal Rumble pay-per-view to the Rumble match and the Rumble winner. And that's clearly not going to be the case this year. Now, the WWE could surprise me and give me a really good show on Sunday. The WWE could please me by giving me a Royal Rumble winner that works in the right way and how they follow up with them and what they do in that WWE World Heavyweight Championship match. But I know going into it right now that I even have to remind myself, and I've been finding myself doing that all week, that the Royal Rumble is this Sunday. This is usually an event just like with WrestleMania that I know weeks ahead of time when it's going to be, and while I might not literally circle it on the calendar, I figuratively do, and if nothing else, I take a mental note that, hey, it's two weeks away, it's three weeks away, it's one week away, it's three days away, it's two days away. Hell, I look at the calendar now, and it dawns on me, I'm like, holy shit, the Royal Rumble's this Sunday. Shame on the WWE for not doing a better job of giving us a more compelling show. Shame on the WWE for throwing the freaking Royal Rumble match under the bus for the title match because it had Brock Lesnar and John Cena in it. Shame on them for not really getting anybody enough momentum to where we can really truly get behind them and fully accept them winning the 2015 Royal Rumble. Yes, up to and including Daniel freaking Bryan. It's a shame. But what else should I expect out of the WWE nowadays, honestly?